All right, so today we're going to have a conversation about mencia, or if I actually knew how to pronounce it in uh, Spanish, mencia. Okay, welcome back to Drinking It In. I'm your host, Chris Casara. We are here to help you know more and drink better, and uh, we're continuing on our uh, wine journey with a um, with a, a mencia, a mencia wine uh, from the Spanish uh, area of Bierzo. So mencia as a grape is um, pretty under the radar. Uh, it's something that's gained a lot more popularity lately. Um, I say lately over the last like three to five years, right? Because in the past, way back when, like the, the, the winemakers in, uh, in this area of Spain, which is kind of in the Northwest uh, Spain. Um, so if I'm looking, I'm gonna, yeah, Northwest Spain, um, they were just, uh, they weren't really paying attention to the quality of the wines and the, these wines didn't have really great reputations. Um, lately though, they've really invested a lot in um, wh whether it's their growing techniques, just being better about quality and just they're making some amazing wines. So like I was saying, um, Mencia mainly grown in the Northwest of Spain. I think the three areas on a bottle you're gonna to wanna to look for are Bierzo, uh, Val Dioris, uh, and Ribera Sacra. This particular bottle, which is always one of my favorites and you know is certainly one of the most gorgeous bottles you'll ever see, the Petalos um, from the uh, Descendientes de Jorge Palacios, the Palacios family. They are um, fairly legendary in Spain. Um, making wines these days and um you know they they released this one is uh 2017 petalos um i've had i try to get this wine like every year and um there it's it's it continues to be one of my favorites that i pull um year after year so i mean kind of see right it's um it's a medium dark of medium darkness right this wine is uh, medium in body, medium to high in acid, right? And it can have uh, some tannins to it. So it's very similar. Um, I think it's similar in flavor profile to Pinot Noir, but similar in weight and mouthfeel to Nebbiolo. So, you know, in the end, right, if you like Pinot Noir, you're going to like a Mencia. Go to the other side. If you like Nebbiolo, you're going to like a Mencia. Um, what are you going to get? You're going to get, I already smell, I can, it's kind of in, enveloping the room. I'm getting some cherries, right? You're going to get cherries, blackberries, some tart red fruit, maybe a cranberry, pomegranate type of a, of a note, as well as if you're lucky, you can get some black licorice. Um, I've also out of this wine tended to get some floral notes if you let it, uh, if you put it in a decanter and let it sit for a while, which is recommended for these wines. Maybe this is what they're, you know, I think that's a grapevine on the uh, on the bottle, but you know, to me it almost looks like flowers and sometimes maybe that's why I get the flowers coming through on the nose here. Yeah, so this, it'll, if, if I were, again, if I were tasting this blind, I'd be embarrassing myself because I'm always, I usually am wrong, um, especially about red wines. This smells like a Nebbiolo from Italy to me, right? So there's some cherries, there's, um, there's a little bit of an earthy note, but you can tell there's going to be a tartness to the uh, to the fruit. It's really pretty. Um, I just opened this. It hasn't been decanted. I might do a second part of this video um, that, you know, after letting this breathe for, for a little bit. But um, let's see what we got here. Let's see what this wine brings. Because it's just, it's a really pretty nose. Yeah, it's perfumey in nature. You notice I, I didn't bring out the um, the popcorn cup today. I figured I'm not really in the mood to to spit the wine out today. I'm going to have a few sips and I'll be I'll be a, a happier guy for it. Um, yeah, this wine it's it's like effortless on your palate. Um, you know, I'm going to say cherries, but it's a cherry cranberry mix uh, on the palate. There's that perfumey note, and um, there's it's it's very, it, it's mouth coating, right? So it's, you know, the finish is still with me. 
This, so for something that's medium weight to, to stick with you this long is really impressive. Um, so, you know, there's a link, link in the description, you know, somewhere for, to, to find this wine. Um, I encourage you to go out, pick it up, buy multiple bottles, right? Because then you can, you can play with it. Um, the other reason you should buy multiple bottles of this wine is because when you think of what wines you want to have on your table for Thanksgiving, I probably should have saved this episode for, you know, my Thanksgiving alternatives. This wine is dynamite with turkey, right? Dynamite with Thanksgiving dinner. So what can you pair Mencia wines with? with um, you know, anything charcuterie, pork, turkey, roasted chicken, um, and you know, stuff that's grilled, whether it's grilled veggies or, or barbecue, um, winter, right? We're kind of getting out of that, uh, grilling season, but you know, roast a chicken in the fall and, uh, and have some mencia and you're going to be a better person for it. So that's about it. I appreciate you guys joining. I appreciate everybody who, uh, certainly who stuck through the video to the end here. Um, you know, drop me a comment, uh, if you have any feedback, good or bad, and, uh, let me know what other, uh, wine or drinks you want to see, uh, on the channel and I'll, uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.